This is Maestro, and I'm here on behalf of the Boxing Voice with Matchroom's own Mr. Frank Smith. Frank, your name came up at the press conference today. Um, Team Bevo brought it up. Apparently, you're their new promoter. Can you explain that, please? Yeah, I, I'm getting 5% as well. Uh, no, do you know what? I work with Bivo on his team and Vadim for a long, long time. They, they've been great and, you know, obviously put the put the uh, pack, the deal together to make this fight happen. We've worked on trying to do this for over a year now, the, the Canelo fight. Bivo wanted it, you know, he's wanted to ch place the best. So, yeah, and they're, and they're obviously, Eddie Eddie and Canelo are very close, so that they felt like they needed to bring, bring me on to the team. So they've got the fat, short version of Eddie, basically. Well, there you go. So, uh... Eddie famously had a little side bet with Jake Paul last week. Is there any kind of a bet, a uh, friendly bet between you and Eddie around the, th this fight? We're not allowed to bet we're, we're because we, we've got lo our promotional licenses. So otherwise, yeah, we're not allowed to bet. But I will have, I'll maybe have another friendly spa with him again. So if, if, uh, if, if my man wins, Dimitri Vivo, then I, have to, then I have to pick something he has to do. And if Canelo wins, he has to pick something I'll do. We'll do that. There you go, press-ups, maybe? I think I beat him at press-ups. I did 46 the other day, or 45. I thought I was going to die, but you know, I did it. I don't think he's got that in the locker. There you go. So you're close with Team Bivol. How do you fancy his chances in this fight? This is Canelo's second fight at light heavyweight, but in my opinion, I mean, this is a tougher test. What do you think about Bivol as an opponent? Look, I think Bivol is a fantastic fighter, and you know, a lot of the people, a lot of people even in boxing, don't really appreciate what he's done in his career already, you know, all the way through the amateurs and, and through to the pros. You know, he is a great fighter, and I think he's going to cause Canelo problems on Saturday. But Canelo, at the same time, is the pound-for-pound pound best fighter on the planet right now. You know, he's been in there, he's shown us what he can do. He's won a title at 175 against Sergei Kovalev. So he's been there, he's done it. And, he, you know, he's, he, he'll, ha he'll happily go to 201 pounds, he said, to go and fight Usyk. So both guys have obviously got their strengths. I think people are maybe are sleeping on Bivo a little bit because they don't know the extent of what he can do. And also maybe judging him on some of his last two or three performances, you know, but he's wanted these big challenges to really get up for, you know, and he, this is the kind of moment he needs to show the best of the Dimitri Bivol. And I think we're going to see that on Saturday night. But at the same time, Canelo Alvarez, pound for pound number one. You know, it's going to be a great fight. I can't wait for it. There you go. So I saw you last week at the Garden in New York. Um, as a Brit coming out over here to the U.S., describe, you know, the differences between putting on a fight in Las Vegas, where we are right now, and kind of the energy that maybe we saw last week at the Garden with Cater Serrano. Yeah, look, I think that's the big difference from the U UK. is easy, really, in being quite honest. Like, in the UK, you got one little country. Every state here is like a new country that you go to. Um, new York's a great place to do shows. Vegas is a great place to do shows. We're lucky enough to do events in these, you know, these mega locations that have been around in boxing for, you know, years and years. Maybe not the T-Mobile, but Las Vegas and the M working with the MGM Grand and MSG as well. We saw the atmosphere there at MSG last week, and it, you know, it's really one of the best things I've ever seen. You know, I've been lucky enough to do events all around the world, the biggest events, not just in boxing, but other sports as well. And to see that on Saturday night was uh, sensational. It really did go above and beyond what we expected from it. Um, and yeah, this weekend we've got another big night and it just shows we're unrivaled, the biggest promoter in the game. No one else is doing it like us on a regular scale, week in, week out around the world. You know, and it's, it's good. Boxing's in a great place. Well, let me ask you this, just to touch on that as a last question for you. Matthew made a big splash here in the U.S. Uh, the perception originally was that it's a U.K. company based in England. Now, with the development of Matchroom UK, you've also developed fights and fighters internationally. How would you describe Matchroom as it is? Is it a global a, a brand? Is it a, a UK-focused brand? Or, you know, wh what are your thoughts on that? No, look, our focus as a business is a global, a global sports powerhouse. You know, people know us for boxing, but we promote 400 events a year in 20 different countries across 11 different sports. You know, we are undoubtedly in boxing the one and only global boxing powerhouse no one else out there is doing what we're doing you know, we're promoting 45 close to 50 shows a year in 10 12 different markets and we'll continue to do that 
big focus for us now is growing the Matrim brand as well. You know, bringing in a lot of people, investing a lot of money and time and effort into that. You know, just to, to grow and grow. People look at, may look may have looked at us as these guys coming in from the UK, but look, we're here. We're promoting the pound for pound number one star, not just in not just the best boxer, but commercial star in the sport. We promote Anthony Joshua, who I'd arguably say he's up there with Canelo in terms of a global, you know, one of the only other global names. Katie Taylor as well. You know, so there's the truth is we've got competitors in markets like in the US here. You got PBC, you got Top Rank. They are our competitors in the US. In the UK, you've got Frank Warren, you've got Boxer, uh, you've got Wasserman. But you haven't got anyone doing what we're doing on a regular scale around the world. And when we finish here, we go to Milan with Scardinia against the Carolis. Then the Friday after that, we go to Bilbao. We've got uh, Metcalf against La Haraja. On the Saturday, we've got Boazzi Richards. Now, we just announced June 4th, Cordina. We announced June 25th, Ranglesai. Um, against Jesse Rodriguez, defense of his title, got a Mexico show on June 10th. It doesn't stop. It's week in, week out, and no one else is doing that. And But look, everyone who's doing what they're doing in the local markets is great for the sport, but no one is pushing the boundaries like we are, and we're going to keep growing, keep expanding. We're not stopping here. You know, it would be quite easy for us to go, look at what we do. We're great, but we don't ever think that. It's always about what's next, what are the new markets, and where are we going into. So it's exciting times. Well, thank you very much, Frank, and uh, for putting on this tremendous event at the Garden. Uh, wishing you all the best this weekend. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Yo, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon.com backslash The Boxing Voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.